Jackie here. If you are thinking about learning Mandarin or if you just started, I'm sure you've been overwhelmed by questions like What do you mean Mandarin? I want to learn Chinese. What's the difference between simplified and traditional Chinese? Pinyin. What's that? What do you mean tones? Is that intonation? Don't worry, watch this video till the end and you'll find answers to all these questions and more, giving you a better picture of this fascinating language. Okay, let's get started. Wait a minute. You know, have you subscribed yet? And give this video a thumbs up if you like it. We're starting right now. Mandarin is just a form of the Chinese language. Chinese includes Mandarin, Cantonese, and roughly over 200 other dialects. Mandarin is the official spoken language of mainland China and Taiwan and one of the four official languages in Singapore. When people say speaking Chinese, they're most likely to be referring to Mandarin. It's also referred to as 普通话 in mainland China. 普通话, common speech. 国语. In Taiwan, 国语, which means national language. 华语, in Southeast Asia, 华语, Chinese language. 汉语, in mainland China as well. 汉语, language of the Han people. The Han is China's majority ethnic group. Most native speakers would speak with accents just like in English. But Mandarin is also called Standard Mandarin or Standard Chinese, which means there is an official correct pronunciation system for every character. There's also a test for it, 普通话 Proficiency Test or 普通话水平测试 PSC. It's intended for native speakers. I don't think there's such thing in English, but correct me if I'm wrong. If you're speaking Mandarin as a foreigner or even as a native speaker, you might get compliments like 你的普通话很标准 your Mandarin is so standard. You know, when speaking English, sometimes people would say, you have a nice accent, or I like your accent. Before I learned the cultural differences, I always felt so upset when I heard that, because I thought that's a harsh criticism. I was like, am I that bad? Why are people judging me to my face, but with a smile? But now I understand English is an international language. It's spoken as the official language in different countries or even different continents. So having an accent does not mean you're not speaking it well enough. As for Mandarin, all you need to know is standard pronunciation is a thing and next time people tell you 你的普通话很标准 you're doing a great job Yay! 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 Woohoo! Pinyin is short for 汉语拼音 which is the official romanization of the Chinese characters based on their pronunciation In Mandarin, pinyin literally translates into spelled sounds. In other words, Chinese phonetic alphabet. There are a thousand and three hundred pinyin if you include the tones. Okay, that might sound a little bit intimidating, but without the tones, there are only around 400. Um, still too many? Well, let me put it this way. Each pinyin consists of one initial and one final. Well, except some special ones, but still, there are only 21 initials and 39 finals. Once you've mastered the pronunciations of them, you'll be able to spell any pinyin just like you learned English by phonics. Or IPA if you've learned English as a second language like I did. For example, this English word, if you've learned phonics, you might pronounce it as tra, e, tree. Or same as IPA, tree. So same in Mandarin, shu, wu, shu, shu. Tree. So easy! But you might have noticed this, which is what we're gonna talk about next. All Chinese languages are tonal languages, which means tones are part of the pronunciation and it could change the meaning of a word. There are four basic tones and one neutral tone in Mandarin, well, six in my own dialect and nine in Cantonese. The four tones in Mandarin are the first tone, a flat tone, the second tone, a rising tone, the third tone, the falling rising tone, the fourth tone, the falling tone, the neutral tone, a light and short tone with no tone marks. For example, ba, 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 ba. Well, sometimes people would just send me a pinyin and ask me, what does this mean in Chinese? It's like I send you this and ask you, what does this mean in English? You don't know because it could be but or but. As I mentioned before, there are around 1,300 pinyin, while Chinese characters are more than 100,000. Yes, 100,000. Wow. Which means a lot of Chinese characters would share the same pinyin, the same pronunciation. And that's the same in English. Some English words would have the same pronunciation. But a lot of Chinese characters have more than one pronunciation. I mean, in English, English, a word's pronunciation could be changed by changing the stress of it. For example, present, present, record, 
record. In Mandarin, however, a character's pronunciations could be completely different, and their meanings would change with the pronunciations. This character, for example, has more than five pronunciations. He, he, huo, huo, hu, completely different. A Chinese character is not necessarily a word. So knowing 3,000 characters does not mean you know 3,000 words. For example, mouth, zui. This character is also a word. Cricket, xi shui. These two characters, however, cannot stand on their own. They only have a meaning when they're put together. So xi or shui is a character, but not a word. They both refer to written forms of Chinese, but as you can tell from their names, simplified Chinese have last strokes. For example, 对, which means yes or correct. A simplified form has 5 strokes, while its its traditional form has 14 strokes. Wow! But some characters are the same in both forms. And simplified characters are used in mainland China, Singapore, and Malaysia, while traditional characters are used in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. So here's the good news for you. The basic word order in Mandarin is the same as in English. Subject, verb, object, SVO, which is actually different from other Asian languages, such as Korean and Japanese. They would put verbs in the end. So subject, object, verb, SOV. Let's take an example. In English, I drink water. In Mandarin, 我喝水. Exactly the same order. In Korean, 저는 물을 마시. Mudder Marshall. Oh, yeah, I don't speak Korean. Oh, English grammar used to drive me crazy. I mean, what's with all these variations of words? Past, present, future tense, do, did, done, eat, ate, eaten, read, read, still read. I mean, what? Like, vocabularies weren't hard enough, so you need to triple it. <laughs> So in Mandarin, verbs have an unchangeable form. If you want to express time frame, you simply add certain words in the sentences. For example, if you want to express the past tense, you can add the particle 了,我看了, I watched. For present tense, you can add the expression 正在,我正在看, I am watching. For future tense, you can add the word 会,我会看的, I will watch. I think this is probably the most fun part of learning Mandarin or any language. There are four types of shu yu, which means formulaic expressions, kind of like idioms in English. The first one, you might have already heard of it, cheng yu, which is often referred to as Chinese idioms. But that could sound a bit confusing to native speakers because technically they're not the only idioms in Mandarin. So let's just call them cheng yu. Most of them consist of four characters and are derived from ancient literature. But that doesn't mean they're only for formal situations or written forms. A lot of them are really common in everyday conversations. You can even find English equivalents to some of them. For example, 一石二鸟 One stone, two birds. Kill two birds with one stone. The second type is 万用语 Collocations. Most of them consist of three characters and they're usually more intelligible. For example, 吃软饭 Eat soft rice. If a guy is living off a woman, then he is eating soft rice. 吃软饭. The third type is two-part allegorical sayings. 歇后语. Oh, these are so fun because they're just like riddles. They consist of two parts. The first part is usually a metaphor or a phenomenon, and the second part is the explanation. For example, 这个房间有点小啊。Hey, the last type is proverbs. They don't have a specific amount of numbers. For example, 多一事不如少一事. Literally translates as one more thing is not as good as one less thing. So stay out of trouble and don't mind other people's business. 多一事不如少一事. So much fun, isn't it? Alright guys, I hope you have found this video useful and if you have any more questions about Mandarin, please leave a comment below. Again, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, it means a lot to me. Subscribe to my channel and turn on this notification bell on the side so you won't miss my new videos. Check out my other videos here, here, or maybe here, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them, you know, just whatever pops up. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!